Some problems can build the wall from day one of this campaign. So Esquire magazine sent a classic liberal reporter to the U.S.-Mexico border. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. The issue. We'll just now to explain Esquire's editor-in-chief. How exciting, Jay Felden. Jay, it's so exciting. How are you, Jay? It's interesting. Great we to love be here, you. Man. What, the reporter came back? Lo you loved him as a kid at TNC. You trust him as a mother at Esquire. It's so great <laughs> to have you here. Mother Wolf. Okay, this is pretty yeah. shocking stuff. So you send a liberal journalist down there. He comes back saying... Trump is right. That's right. They so we said, you got to go down there with no preconceived what? notions, right? Just an empty notebook. Go to my former home state right. where my, you know, and, and, and walk the border, drive the border 800 miles and talk to whoever you see and, and let them tell us what they think about what's really going on and whether we need a wall, in fact. Instead of hearing it from the debate stage, let's yeah. hear it from the people who are And the people say, build the wall. They said build the wall. They said two things, whether it was Hispanic, Anglo, Democrat, Republican, uncommitted, clueless, whatever. They said we want a wall, and yet we want it to be married with some compassion toward the people that we're trying to Here's another keep surprising from thing from the, the article is that he said that Hispanics were less sympathetic towards illegal yeah. immigrants than whites. So I think that there's a lot of interesting yes, things friction, there, probably. but one thing I think is that most of those Hispanics are first generation and they see it as unfair that they came over here the legal way, became citizens, and now they're having to compete for jobs with those who are coming across the border on a daily basis, right? So I think they feel, as one guy says, that let them get in line, right? Yeah. Um, I think the, the, the Anglos have most, for the most part, probably grown up in the tradition of the West, which is a place of welcoming immigrants through its history. And their attitude is more that that should be an honored thing today. Well, I think they also think, oddly, that you know, the more well, the well enforced that if it, if it, if the laws are enforced, right. that compassion will prevail. Speaking of right? laws being enforced, what about the border agents? What are they saying? They say we need a wall, but that's where you begin to realize that the wall is just a symbol for the solution. What we need is an acronym, I think. You know, yeah. In other words, you need partial wall, you need boots on the ground, you need radar, you need cooperation with the Department of Defense. It has a lot of technology that they won't share right now. Because Worst they, acronym they, ever. Right, okay, that's so help me out with an acronym. Um, well, you know, it's drones? got a name, though. It's called Comprehensive Immigration Reform, and two presidents of two different parties have championed it, and neither were able to get it through the Congress. But the one so, thing that wasn't I mean, in there all those was, things were in it. was comprehensive uh, government reform in Mexico. Right, well, that's, that's part of it. I think yeah. that a lot of the feeling is that these people are having, you know, no choice but to come north, right? They don't get three square meals a day, yeah. and they're looking for opportunity, you know. Yeah. And so, you know, we need pressure is, on that. Is side their as conception well. of a wall Trump's conception? No, so no. just a concept of a wall. It's a concept of, of a, a solution that you know I think was not a part of the political discourse before he brought it up, for better or worse, right? You know, the hyperbole that he that he that he gave to it, the kind of real estate. I'm a builder. I'm going to build a wall, or I'm going to build something to solve something. I'm going to sell you an apartment and convince you that the closet can be turned into a master bedroom, right? This is the same idea, you know, exaggerating an idea in order for it to become talked about and maybe even therefore for a halfway point to be found. So, Jay. We're, we, we've been talking all about the wall. Let's talk about a man who broke the rules and changed the world. Digo. And this and is poses. living off the grid with his kids. A lot for with a flip talk phone, man. Can you talk, talk about it. I love no, the I just did phone. He's awesome. I think he's awesome. I just think he's truly the ref a refreshing uh, you know, version of, uh, <laughs> of a guy who, who, who lives according to his own uh, tune. And, you know, that kind of gets echoed throughout this day and age, right? Whether it's Trump or Bernie or um, Muhammad Ali, who died over the weekend, mm -hmm. was one of the great, you mm -hmm. know, uh, greatest cover boys ever of Esquire. You know, these people who decided to do live life their own way and have the courage to do it and break the rules and remake out. them is very cool. Amazing stuff. So, Esquire, man, congratulations. Thanks. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.